Royal Ivy King, I just want to say one thing. Mm -hmm. All American Homecoming, you are the gym that we didn't know we needed. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, really, I just saw the meme about you where uh, the, the funniest this last episode, last week of actually first episode, <laughs> where you're like, wait, why am I in this? You know, <laughs> I just want to start in there because I think it's just amazing that they can put a Black queer face to someone that is an integral part. You know, usually that's where it's kind of like, the, the bigger friend or the quirky friend, but it's the queer friend that doesn't mind telling her business to men and women, you know, attacking them both with the same type of certainty that shows the duality, you know what I mean? So I just want to, I just want to get right into that. How is it playing that character? Oh, an incredible thing. I, I, it's a, she's a character that really inspires me a lot of times, even sometimes the stuff that she says about like, you know, staying true to you and, and the way that she gets her friends together. Um, sometimes that that gets me checked in together and be like, wait a minute, let me let me get myself focused. Let me get myself on the right path. But um, I, I think it's such a beautiful thing because I remember I told our showrunner like back at the top, I was like, it's really important to me to have a character that kind of breaks the stereotype in which queer people or non-binary people, gender non-conforming people are often portrayed, which is like this, I'm just kind of going with the wind. I don't really know who I am, you know, whatever floats. And she's a person, she's like, no, I know who I am. I've been this person for a long time. This is my truth. I, I honor my truth and I stand with that. And the showrunner, she said right back, she was like, she was like, and not only that, but I also want to make sure that we're telling a story that isn't just hyper focused on this being a queer character. She is a person that just so happens to be queer. And she goes through things just like everybody else does. And we want to give her more depth than every time she comes on screen, it's queer, 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 this. You know, so it's starting to paint the picture of the full and beautiful life that queer people have all over this world. No, and I love that. You know, one thing I do love about her character is that also, and you know, and I'm I'm a gay man myself, right? I've I'm married to my husband. We've been married for eight years together for a decade now, right? Like how long, <laughs> you know, a gay year, that's like, that's a lifetime. Um, <laughs> but one thing I also, I do love is that there's a respect where you're not using the jargon we would see on Housewives. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that stereotypical. It's not like people went out to the, the gay establishments to study and then bring back and, you know, do those things. Is that something um, that you even put to the forefront or is that even just what the script was already? It's, um, I think it's kind of a little balance in between. Like there are some moments when I'm like, I do want to like dive into how queer people speak and just the language in which we communicate. Um, it was even like in the first episode, I think in that scene with me, Keisha and Cam, there was actually a point, I think the line was just like, like, um, leave me out of it or something like that or I have nothing to do with this and we did a few takes of that and then I went to the show run and I was like can I just try something she's like yeah we got what we needed so we did the take and I was like now why am I in it and they were like <laughs> boom and then I saw it in the episode and I was like yeah so there's like that balance of just knowing like that's how we talk like that is how this generation speaks but then the flip side is I really wanted to make sure that I was portraying a young queer professional. You know, she's someone, she's studying law. She's someone that's very grounded. And I, I always wanted her to sound very intelligent, but also she speaks like a person. Like she she talks and she jokes just like everyone else does. But I do, it was very, very important to me and it still is to make sure that she is viewed as someone that is pursuing something in this life. Um, not someone, like, like one of my examples um, or one of my big inspirations for this role was Nico in P-Valley. Yeah. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that I didn't watch Nico so much that I simply just mimicked someone. I wanted to be inspired by what he's doing over there, but then and then also pull it into what's happening here that she's in college and she's discovering herself. Mm -hmm. No, and that's definitely something that you can see that, right, that resonates, especially when you look at it, you know, your hair is laid, your hair is always going to be to the tens, but then you also have a mustache, and then you're also <laughs> in workout, but you're also in, um, you know, boy attire working out, you know, there's this really nice balance that the character gives that shows that there is no one way, because, you know, we would want her to get rid of the mustache, be in some type of like, um, you know, spandex or Spanx or anything. 
but we don't have that. And it's just something that's beautiful. Is that something that also you maybe that you have suggested or are there moments when it comes to wardrobe, hair and different things? Yes, um, there was, I, I was talking to wardrobe and one of the conversations that I really, I, I had from the jump was that I feel like, and, and Nate, she is very, she's very feminine presenting but also there is this beautiful thing that exists when you get to explore all of the things that live in the middle and all of the things that are in the in-between and so I was like there are moments kind of like back in season one where the scene opens and she's sitting there in a do-rag you know what I mean and it's like to go all the way through those different things so we start to break down how specific you know someone has to act if they lean one way towards feminine lean one way towards masculine so that was definitely a conversation one of the one of the people that I really like look towards anytime I'm thinking or anytime I'm asked about you know Nate's fashion is Rihanna yeah. because she she is an artist that literally will blend feminine and masculinity together within her wardrobe and it's so beautiful one day she'll come out with a bandana a big oversized jersey and big old cargo pants but then she'll add a heel and I'm like yes Rihanna yes that's what I'm talking about <laughs> um and then of course when it comes to hair Beyonce that was like from the jump it's that like, was from the jump <laughs> that's it that that is literally if we can just get anything close to that we have met the the, the assignment <laughs> nice get a little bit more into her and then I really want to get into you but and I love that they haven't pushed her to have a love affair yet right like because you know sometimes we push that type of because then the story takes a whole different turn in it college black college you know so what is your take on that like is are we building up to seeing something later or do you want to just have it naturally come because I'm starting to feel like there's something I'm looking at. I'm, I'm piecing together something. I, I feel like there's going to be a big plot twist, like my friend says. And I feel like we're not going to be ready for it. So here's what I can tell you, because it's out. Um, the, the trailer for season one, we saw her in the elevator making out with somebody. Yeah. And then the trailer for episode three that just came out last night, we see her kissing somebody in between a tree. So all I can say is that there is something coming, but I think where it's going to go is something that may be unexpected and what she gains from that um, and, and what ends up happening within her friend group is something that is a little unexpected, but it's something that I love um, because without, without spoiling, she goes through the moment of discovery and, and she goes through the example of trying to see herself, especially in this college that was honestly made for just two genders. And she's looking around and trying to find a mirror. And I think what she's about to go through over these next couple of episodes will start to see her find what that mirror is. Nice, nice, I love that. Now <laughs> that we're done with her, now we're gonna get on to you. So Royal, Mm -hmm. Tell me, how was it to get this role, especially a spinoff of a very new, like the, uh, Amer All America is already a cult classic for, you know, the Black community and just for people in general. How mm -hmm. was it when you got the call that it was you? I will never forget. I was actually at a park right near Warner Brothers because this was during COVID when all the gyms were closed. And I had, I was getting ready to go for a run. And my manager called me and was like, you got it. Literally, when I tell you I was running and crying, running and crying, running and crying, I didn't need no pre-workout or anything. That was all that I needed to hear. And so from there, being completely transparent, it was a five-line co-star. Like that, that was the role. So from it's a transition to where we are now, for me to get the call that it was like, we want you to be a recurring guest star through season one. Um, that was something that meant everything to me because I had never, I had never recurred on that many episodes, um, in anything before. And then also to know that within filming the pilot, we got so close as a cast. So the biggest thing was for me, I really didn't want to lose all of these incredible relationships and these incredible people that I met. And then here we are now, and I'm sitting in my first series regular job. Like, and so it's just, it's the beautiful transition one, it's all the all the all the praise for for our showrunner NK. Like she she's one that when she tells you I got you, she means it. Um, and when she tells you tells you that she sees something in you, 
we can see it here because I'm I'm still in the show. So it's all the tribute to her. And one thing she always tells me, she's like, I didn't give this to you. You earned it. So for me, it's something that if I talk too long about, I'll get really emotional. So oh, okay. <laughs> I, will get, I do. I like, baby, when I tell you I'm the biggest cry in this cast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's something that anytime, anytime I really think about, it's very, I find it very humbling yeah. because the way that I've always viewed leadership is, you know, the higher you go, the more people you serve. So mm -hmm. for me being in this role, I view that as something, it, it, it's something of servitude to my community. It's, it's a servitude to the people that are in high school now that are young, people that are older than me that are inspired by this character. Yeah. To know that I'm playing a character that can inspire the people that inspired me. And ins it can inspire someone that was my age at one point sitting in high school. That's like endless thanks. <laughs> exactly. Nice, I love that. Well, your background in acting, how did you get into it? And did you ever, especially being black and queer and unapologetically you, did you ever feel like, you know, I mean, this is like, this is probably like the perfect role because you can be yourself, but then also you want to do other roles, you know what I mean? So did you ever like, you know, your start, how'd you get to your start in it? But did you ever feel like who you are being unapologetic in your presentation to the world was ever there a fear of like hindrance? Yeah, so I, for the start, I always throw it back to Shakespeare. Like I was, I was singing and dancing all through middle school in church in school at assemblies. And then finally my middle school drama teacher was like, I really think you get in, should get into acting. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm learning all them words. So finally a friend and my middle school drama coach convinced me to do a Shakespeare camp. That convinced me to go forward in high school. And high school is where I really realized this is what I want to do with my life. Um, and then, you know, went to New York, trained a conservatory. Um, and then stepping into the the professional world it was challenging the school i went to in new york there were i never had a black teacher the entire time i was there so there was no one to ever prepare me of like this is what the industry is like for us and going into musical theater it was once called the great white way for a reason like there just simply aren't enough roles for us mm -hmm. and so i felt that it was really slow progressing but also i didn't fit a type yeah. I didn't fit any of the roles that were made with someone else in mind. And it was very discouraging until I played Angel and Rent. And that was when I was like, oh my gosh, she's incredible. <laughs> um, so it was there was a there was a, a real rocky, a real rocky start in New York. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of a lot of trials, but I truthfully came to the realization at one point that it may not actually be that I'm doing something that benefits me right now at this age pushing and, and staying true to who I am is probably serving who I'm going to become. And I, I, I always thought to myself, like, I know it's hard, but if you stick with it and you stay you, the older version is thanking you so much right now because they are sitting where you're going to go. Nice. I love that. It's like um, my pastor used to say, he um, would say that, um, you know, our spirits, you know, he would say spirits move in spirit time. So you'll see the vision of where you are, but he said, remember your spirit sees where you, where you're going to be. So exactly. stop being so anxious, stop being so, he said, cause that's caused depression and anxiety because you're just on your way. So just stay calm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when, um, when you, what made you move to LA? It was actually after I finished Rent and I was watching this trend in, in, in musical theater where they were just kind of taking a whole bunch of movies and turning them into musicals. Yeah. And I was talking to Jen Cody, who's Hunter, who's Hunter's wife. And Hunter is the brother to Sutton Foster, if anybody knows who that incredible name is in musical theater. And she was basically telling me that, um, why don't you go to LA and you do what you need to do and you make a name for yourself there and then at some point these broadway theaters or or the theater community will be more open to who you are and there will be shows that are built for you but she was like don't sit here and wait for that to happen nice. go and go and do your thing she was like but no it's going to be hard in la so i made the transition lived with my aunt for like the first year of being here didn't have a car i remember there was one time i had a job at santa clarita studios and i would walk for an hour and a half <laughs> from the train station Did you just want exercise yes yes and i no. and keep in mind i would go to the gym before arriving and if my call time was 7 a.m i was up and maybe 11 45 the night before 
I went to the gym in Pasadena and then I would take the train to, to downtown LA to Union Station and then to Santa Clarita Studios. But the train, the closest stop was um, okay. an hour and a half. So I would walk because I was like, I'm not, if I, if I Uber there, then it's like, it's taking money away. Yeah. And it was lit. I was getting like day player roles at the time. So it was like, I need, I needed to save as much as possible. Nice. You know, I love that, especially because you are one who shows the perseverance. You know, I always, whenever I interview anybody in entertainment, I always love these type of stories because we're in this social media age where everybody sees, they see your success. They follow you after the fact, right? You know, and then it's just like, I think it's just programmed, this instant gratification, but they don't hear that you were walking an hour, you know what I mean? You like, and how many other Royals auditioned for the part didn't get it and still walk an hour and wait for right. their time to shine. Yeah, and it's it's that thing of like, I always tell people don't fully buy into this social media stuff because on social media and on, on the internet or wherever you're seeing this, you're seeing the final result of something that could have taken decades to get there. Um, and so my thing is, I always encourage people fall in love with the process. Like you're seeing the one hour TV show, but that took eight days of filming. Yeah. And it took hours outside of that of rehearsing and everything. And all you get is this one hour long thing. So it's like, you really have to fall in love with the process because that's where you're spending most of your time. Nice. I love that. Talking about the process, how was your process getting ready for this role? Like to even audition, how was that? How how does Royal get ready to audition? Ooh, um, for me, as soon as I like I get the sides come in and my, my team sends me all of that stuff, read all the information, and then I try to pick up as many clues as I can from the sides. Um, or if they sometimes they'll send the full script for you to take a look at. And mm -hmm. I always try to like go through and find as much information about my character that other people have said, because that kind of helps me draw some conclusion. But sometimes when you don't get that, you kind of just got to look into the character, do as much work in your head, identify your objectives, find your actions, do all of that actor work in there. Mm -hmm. And then the, the most important thing I could say is get off of the page. <laughs> like, <laughs> And, and, and I would say, like, with doing that, don't focus on memorizing the words, focus on rehearsing the text and, 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 and going through as many different choices and options that you can possibly find. And you'll be surprised when you realize that it's sunk into your brain because you weren't focusing on, I got to memorize that word. Um, so for me, it's about a lot of the rehearsal, a lot of the process. And then I record my tape and I let it go. Because at the end of the day, that saying that, what's for you is for you and what isn't for you it isn't for you always holds true if i don't get that role that means it was for somebody else yeah. but that casting director saw my work and my manager she's always told me she said the audition that was the win like like if you book the role that's like that's wonderful but getting the audition letting casting and the directors and anybody that watched that that called you in that was the goal because they liked something that they saw about you. Maybe not for this project, but it could be something coming up. Nice, I love that. I have seven minutes left. I, want, I always like to be conscious of everybody's time um, and not be long-winded. Um, and so one thing is, I would love to say, what are some misconceptions people don't see? You know, they see you on this show, they see you there, they see all these things. What is something you wish people would just know? Like, hey, even if you do get the recurring, the guest, whatever, Life isn't still what you may think it is for us in entertainment. Mm. I think I think if there was anything that I would I would encourage people to know that I would want people to know, it would be that we as actors are so very different from our characters. <laughs> and I <laughs> I, I hope that I hope that people can grasp sometimes that like talk about talk about what the character said talk about your opinions on the character but when you start bringing it at us we were like no wait a minute wait a minute and I, I will say one of the first things that I I really started to discover is the idea of sometimes what you're seeing play out on the screen was not the actor's choice it wasn't, it wasn't the full context of what the actor delivered. Sometimes it was the direction. Sometimes they, they cut, 
when you see an episode, they have cut that sucker up in so many different ways. Like you don't know how they can simply just take a reaction that you made and maybe even a, a, the scene in the same location you did a few days ago in the same wardrobe and put it here. And you're like, I didn't make that face. Like, I didn't make that face at you like during that scene, but that's where they wanted the scene to go. Oh, wow. You know? Or sometimes the actor, like sometimes I'll rehearse something, but the director's like, no, I want to take it in a whole different direction. And I'm like, period. That's my job to take direction. That's my job to do what it is that you asked me to do. As long as you know, of course, it's morally sound within yeah. the company of what we're doing. Um, but that's probably one of the biggest things I would say is like, you know, always view the character and know that the character is a combination of what the actor brought, but also what the director, the showrunner, the editors, and, and, and the story editors all wanted that scene to, to have a direction in. So know that those two things are very, very separate. <laughs> nice, I love that. Two last things. One, because you are Black and because you are queer, if you have to describe your experience in this in industry, you know, good, bad, the ugly, anything in between, how would you describe it in one sentence from the Black perspective and from a queer perspective? Mm. Don't expect people to see you without seeing yourself first. Um, I think that, like, as a queer person, one of the, the lessons I had to learn early on is that a lot of people in the world just simply will not see you fully because a lot of times people don't respect something they can't comprehend. Mm -hmm. And if they don't understand it, there's, there's a level of disrespect that you may receive and you feel like, oh, people don't see me, they don't understand me. But something I learned is like, well, do you see you? Do you understand you? Because I, I think that I was actually projecting onto people to reflect back to me something that I didn't see. And so I would always encourage people to find, find what it is that fills your cup and find what you need to do in discovering yourself the same way you do with your characters, the same way that you spend time discovering your favorite artists and things like that. Also take that time for you because truthfully, if you don't, nobody else will. Like if you don't see yourself, nobody else is going to see you and, and give that back to you what you're trying to discover. Nice. I love that. I usually ask, what advice would you give? But you already gave the advice with the yeah. story. So we good. We good. Like you did a two for one combo. Uh, but uh, lastly, what's next for Royal? Is there anything else we should be expecting, looking forward to? Um, honestly, we are still kicking through season two right now. Um, I'm hoping that there will be some things coming through next year. But we're actually, we're still at that stage of like, season three what's happening and that the scheduling honestly is what affects everything so right now we're staying pretty solid in the schedule with season two but if there's something if there's something coming i'm gonna definitely let y'all know <laughs> okay perfect well thank you so much royal this has been amazing i'm super excited i know everyone else will your family will love to hear from you oh thank you so much thank you for your time i appreciate it